Hey, you flever schnoots, it's time to install Debian 12. Like a fresh install on real hardware, because this is Distro Delves. What's behind us? Ah, it's just installing the regular old system. This is the KDE Live system. So like how Debian has their big installer, they actually have live sessions like live ISOs too. So I think that the big installers are kind of a thing of the past and most people have come to expect these live session installers. But I have to say that Debian's live installers are a little bit rough around the edges like the KDE wallet service. Why am I being asked this in a live session? Like I get it from a KDE's perspective, but that's configurable and it, it shouldn't be popping up here. Another weird thing is the installer is nowhere to be seen. So if you were to boot into this, you might not even realize that you're in a live session. It's not even listed as a favorite. You have to type install. And then once you launch it, you have to authenticate like sudo to access the installer. And the password isn't listed anywhere. You have to Google it. It's L-I-V-E, live or live if you prefer. But besides all that, it's just a normal Calamares installer for Debian 12 Bookworm. It's kind of weird calling Debian Bookworm stable because to me, Bookworm has been testing for so long. Oh, before I go ahead, Another thing I don't particularly love is that it creates a swap partition that isn't configurable and it's 16 gigs, which is it's, it's huge for a file swap. So weird unconfigurable defaults, but again, it's like Debian's installer. So if you want finer control, you just launch the big installer. So I'm using a new machine for this one and I'm going to affectionately call it toaster because it looks like a toaster. Maybe I'll show it to you sometime. But it's a capable little machine, and I think that it will do very nicely for a Debian GNU Linux distro delve. GNU Linux, Debian GNU Linux 12. Or is it Debian 12? Or GNU Linux Debian 12? We'll just call it Debian Bookworm, how's that? And we're all done! I feel like this install was a little bit on the longer side, between 5 and 10 minutes. And it's USB 3 on an SSD, so maybe a lot of that was network, I don't know. But let's boot in. Oh, we got the live system again. Let's try that one more time. There we go. Debian GNU Linux and advanced options for Debian GNU Linux, which includes Debian GNU Linux with Linux 6.1.0. And that should be the latest kernel that Debian ships with, but we'll see. This is Debian stable, so Debian LTE or Debian stale, if you prefer. We've reached SS SDDM. SDDM, right? And that's going to become a KDE project pretty soon or something like that. That's cool. We've got Plasma and X11. Wayland, wait, no. We have Wayland and X11. Wayland being the default, which is good. I had Debian testing, like, installed on my main machine, and I still don't have an option to boot into to Wayland, so I don't know what's wrong with that. But it's good to see that it seems to work right out of the box. And it also remembered my Wi-Fi. I was not expecting that. It didn't remember how to log in because I, it, I, I guess, I don't know. The fact that it saved my Wi-Fi connection is pretty cool. So I guess that begs the question, did it bring, did it bring my KDE wallet along with me? Because I, I wouldn't have expected that. So I was a little surprised to see that KDE doesn't have its own welcome app. I thought that it did, but in retrospect, all of the cute or KDE welcome apps I've seen have been like their own distro. Gnome has its welcome app, and apparently KDE doesn't, but you know, that's fine. Once again, this is Debian GNU Linux 12, KDE Plasma version 5.27.5, KDE Frameworks version 5.103, Qt version 5.15.8, and the Linux kernel version is 6.1.0. Let's see if there are any terminals? Why yes, there are one, two, three, four, five terminals installed. That's, that's kind of lame. But let's check for some updates. I'm going to guess there's probably none, but install. No, upgrade. Oh, there's actually quite a few. It's all Firefox of all things. And Discover is saying I've got security updates. Is that for Firefox? Look at all of the different languages it ships with too. Let's pop Discover open and see what it does. I've seen Discover not work out of the box on some other distros, so I'm curious. It seems fine, though. 
And it looks like all of these updates are Firefox, ECR, which I guess makes sense because it's the ESR version, but I don't know, it's weird. I rebooted so that we can get a more accurate representation of what the system resources are. And we'll check DF and free. A fresh install of Debian 12 with KDE appears to weigh about 10 gigabytes, which is a little on the heavy side, to be honest. It's probably all those language packages and things like that. Those like five different terminals, what? And then as far as memory used, 1.6 gigabytes? What on earth? Why? That's a lot. This is a fresh Debian KDE install. Why is it so bloated? The KDE system monitor is reporting even more, 1.8. It's not using any swap, so I guess that's good. But I would like to see what is hogging it all. Even when I show all the processes, it's, it seems like it's doing that Windows thing where it's not telling me the truth because this does not add up to almost two gigs. Like there's no way, no how. So I'm not exactly sure. I don't know what this number is. Free is reporting. What's free reporting now, 1.8? Okay, so they're reporting the same thing. Does this thing ate up a gig of, of memory? There's no way. What is doing that? Dang, that does consume a lot of memory. That's crazy. I'm looking at this column, by the way. So as you probably know, Debian is a very old Linux distribution. One of the OG ones from the 90s, I think. This is Debian 12 Bookworm. They come out, new releases of the stable branch come out every couple years. This was a year and nine months and 28 days of development. And uh, these are, these are pretty, it's a pretty big deal when these come out. It's, it's very exciting. So we're all very excited to take a look at it. This is Debian GNU 12 Linux. This is Debian GNU Linux 12 Bookworm, 64-bit edition with kernel 6.1.0. It uses Bash, Plasma, Kwin, and this terminal is console, though if you want other terminals, there are a bunch of other ones you can use. So, something we do on distro delves is test out a bunch of file formats and I haven't done this in a while and I have no idea if my network shares are even still working or anything and there they are cool so let's grab these files let's actually grab these files and drop them straight into the home folder and write straight into those exactly like that this will take five minutes over my network but this just confirmed that Samba is all set up and configured out of the box, at least from this machine's perspective. It's probably not sharing this folder, this public folder by default. And it seems like single click is the default, which isn't the default for most distros. So that makes me think that this is a very vanilla, like bare bones KDE install, which is fine because it's Debian and I wouldn't expect him to add any flavor to it because it's Debian. It's about as vanilla as it gets. As the copy wrapped up, I wanted to take a look at printers, and much to my surprise, I, mean, I shouldn't be that surprised. I mean, my brother printer was detected on the network without any issues, but hey, it works right out of the box on Debian, so that is cool. Let's take a look at some documents. They all look fine. Let's take a look at some pictures. There's nothing. Okay, we won't do that. Let's take a look at some videos. Let's open up the system monitor. If I could type and we'll take a look at the trends as we open this because this helps us determine whether there is video playback acceleration. I'm not actually sure what it's called. GPU acceleration? I'm not sure. But ideally when we open one of these 4K images, we shouldn't see a gigantic spike like this. Well, actually that's not too bad. As long as the playback is okay, and it seems a little bit choppy. Who is this? This is H264 at 4K. I would expect this to play just fine. No, it's definitely chopping. You can see how hard the CPU is working. It shouldn't be working this hard. So 1080p is still working pretty hard. H265 at 4K is bogging the machine down like the first one did. And these are these are supposed to be 4K, 6, 60 frames a second. Can you check in Dragon Player? Is there a way to do that? Well, if there is, I couldn't find it. But I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be 60 frames a second. 
Ah, Dolphin can tell us. It's actually 30 frames a second, but still, this isn't 30 frames a second. Let's try VP8. Probably the same thing. It's still not 30, but this is probably playing the best out of all of them. And then VP9 at 4K is probably going to be a train wreck. It's actually not too bad. It's not the best in the world, but it's, it's still not working super hard. So VP8 and VP9 are open source, so I would expect those to to ship and work just fine on Debian if they ship with that support out of the box, which they seem to. But the proprietary stuff like H265, I think this one ran probably the worst. It spikes there. These are these are pretty rudimentary tests. So this is just kind of seeing what the playback is on Debian. And I mean, it's okay. There's probably packages that you can install to make it run even better. I'm just gonna close this out and move on to the next set of tests. So we got a couple of binaries. We have app images, which ask you to execute and the machine is spinning up and it doesn't look like we're going. Here it is, Belana Etcher. So that app image works out of the box and if we launch it again, will it, will it fire up? No, it still takes some time. It is a little bit faster, but not by much. Take a look at the Caden Live app image. And I've got some flat packs here. So the Caden Live app image works just fine. Do we have flat pack? We do not. Okay. So we got to install it. Now flat packs installed. Can you just double click these? And it opens in Discover, but it doesn't work. What is going on here? Well, how did I grab this modal? Oh, and now it's gone. I was moving the modal. I didn't even see what it said. <laughs> Well, this is, oh, this is the flat pack back end. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I launched a flat pack ref that opened discover that took me to the flat pack back end, which I wouldn't even have expected to get from discover. So let's install it and it installed quickly. So now what? Um, so like as a like I know what to do I'm just gonna close this and launch it again but a new user wouldn't know what just happened <laughs> I'm not even to be honest I'm not sure what happened I think it installed the back end I don't know what's going on okay maybe this workflow is a little bit buggy I'm sure that flat packs work though let's let's try installing OBS can I just point at the file like this and install it through the terminal no, I think that it's just, I don't think it's using the file at all. That's fine. Okay, now we have OBS, and unfortunately it doesn't populate here, but I suspect that's because I only just installed OBS. So let's, I'm curious if a logout will work. Do you have to log out or restart for that to populate? Let's, let's just log out and see if that's enough. We're doing live testing on the spot. So we got, we got the terminal and we have OBS, look at that. So a logout, logout, login is all that's needed. And, and I, I wanna point out how fast this loads in. Like as soon as I hit enter on the login screen, I'm just like, bam, I'm in there. That's what I, that's what I expect from a machine, especially a, like a machine in 2023 that's like blazing fast. Why would it take any time to log into your system? So OBS, I haven't done an OBS test in distro delves in a while, so I've got it. Let's, let's do it. Let's do an OBS test. So OBS says we've got a software encoder, base resolution scaled down to 853 by, so 480. That sucks. I wonder what the trouble is. Maybe that's like, maybe that, maybe this is really all this little puny machine can do. So I was moving on to the game section, the, the part where I test the performance of the games, and I have this folder called the games. I've got console all the way down. But I noticed that I have this folder called GNU Linux, and the, there's a line between the U and the L. And even if we zoom in, like it doesn't make the text that much bigger, but you're like, what? Why is it doing that? Is that the typeface? Or like, is that because this is like, Debian GNU Linux or something. I don't know. You know, I wasn't really feeling any games in that in the the, the folder of games that I have, but I've been thinking about Veloran lately. Did I spell it right? Is it Veloran? 
So I'm going to install this and, and see if this little computer can run it like at all. So I got it installed and I try to launch it and it shows a little bouncing icon, but then it just dies. And I, I try to run it straight through through Flatpak in the terminal and it just dies. So that's unfortunate. I think a better test anyway would be Supertux Cart. Classic. And I've got a B-top running in the background. So we can kind of see what the system's doing as we play. Supertux may need to connect to a server to download some add-ons. Of course it can do that. I'm just going to create a local account. Dun, 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 do I want to play the tutorial? No. I actually don't think the audio is working. Oh no, it's working. <laughs> I don't know where it's going though. I capture this through an EVGA capture card and I, I've i never really gotten the audio figured out on it. And maybe I should because Super Tux Card actually has a really good soundtrack. I really can't recommend this game enough because it runs on really low-end hardware like this. I guess this isn't really that low-end. It's a Ryzen embedded R150. Is that is that really what it is? I'm reading it from the little graph on the top right. Now, one thing that I, I love and hate about Super Tux Cart is that you have to play to unlock all of the tracks. And I love that. I love that as a, as a gamer for like a game mechanic. I think it's it's a really cool way of rewarding people for playing your game. But for someone doing like what I'm doing, I, I'd like to have like a variety. Oh, that sucked. I'm in like last place now, like way last place. But basically what I'm saying is that it adds variety. I only have like five tracks to choose from. I, I'm, I'm basically just like ranting and talking about nothing at this point. Debian 12 is a solid little Linux distro and Super Tux Kart is a fun little Mario Kart. It's more like a Diddy Kart clone and I've, I've talked about it enough so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here. So this is Distro Delves episode number two for 2023 and I just kind of felt like doing it but Debian 12 just had a big release, and we're going to be on Debian 12 for the next probably couple of years, so why not celebrate it with a delve? And here we are, so. But what I'll do now is send you off to the credits. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.